glad you're here this morning, and we're going to jump on in and continue to praise God.
I said before, we're going to be kind of going along the theme that that unseen reality beyond. We talked the other week, and it seems like forever ago because we haven't been here, but we talked the other week about how God opened the eyes to see chariots of fire beyond the reality that we live in. And what was that? You know, what was that? Was that being being able to see the angelic realm that was there, or just a representation of it? Does it matter? The reality is that it, it told us that there is something there beyond what we see that is alive and active. And that God ultimately has all things in control even when it doesn't feel like it. And so as we continue today, um, you know, just going with that out of control theme, John Kinsey is going to come and share. <laughs> no, he um, yeah, that's a nice segue. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Exactly what I was going with. But no, John is going to come and he's going to share um, more about the camp, about the things he's doing in Ukraine. And then from that, we're going to talk a little bit later on. Um, I'll finish up and bring it home. But John, come and share and be out of control as much as you want. And Mike's right there. It's interesting. <laughs> it was interesting that song um, it was well with my soul a friend of mine in Ukraine who has a camp and things have just not been going well over there for them and he said he put a blog post up and it was a friend of his wrote it it's called when all is not well with my soul and uh, the thing was I didn't understand the background of that song but he said the guy who wrote it um, had been a successful lawyer, believer, and then, I, I think it was during the Chicago fire, or maybe it was before, somehow he had lost his business. And then his wife and kids were sailing to England, and the ship sunk, and only his wife survived. And after that, he was able to write that song, It Is Well With My Soul. At the spot where the boat sank. At the spot where the boat sank. So it's just, you know, kind of a, one of those things is where, where we put our focus, you know, and what gets us through, because things are going to happen in our lives. You know, they happen every day, and not good things, but it's what we can do with those things, you know, that happen in our lives, how they're either going to crush us or pull us forward. And next Sunday, I'm leaving for Ukraine, and I'm going to be there for three months. And I, what I wanted to do today was kind of show you some pictures, not so much about from the camp, but some of the kids from the camp about some people I've met over all these almost 20, over 20 years of going there and how they've taken those circumstances and somehow turned them around. And the theme that we're going to go on the camp is on, about relationships. And the verses that we're going to focus on are from John, and it says, the role of the Spirit. And Jesus said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not behold him and know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you after a little while. So, you know, the, the theme is we want to, because obviously we work with orphans, but Jesus is saying, I won't leave you, even though he's physically not here. He says he's going to leave us the helper that can say, can help us to get through the I have all is well with my soul. And I want to show some uh, people who have come over, over the years um, who are orphans mostly, but who God has changed their lives. Uh, the guy in the middle is, is Kolya. Kolya I met in 2005. And he wanted nothing to do with God, nothing to do with uh, us. Um, but God still, he still wanted a relationship. So we started talking and different people in his lives. And he came to live with 
Bogdan and Anya at the Safe Haven House, and while he was there, God just touched his soul. And this is him now. This, uh, those are the, the little boy on the, the far side is his son, and the girl in the purple is his daughter, and those are other kids from the orphanage. He and his wife, who is also an orphan, now work in a ministry to kids at a different orphanage, and they have a home for boys and girls leaving there so they can come and have a family. And currently they have uh, three boys living with them from this orphanage. So going from being an orphan himself, God intervening in his life, his faith has come alive in this. This is another guy, uh, Vitalik, we call him Hanjik, and his last name in, in Ukrainian it starts with an H, in Russian it's, it's G, but they call him Hanjik, but so in Russia it would be Ganjik. And he was like, some kids call him Ganja. And he was like, he found out, he was like, he's like, is it true in English Ganja is marijuana? I was, like, I was like, yes. And he's like, oh, cool. <laughs> but, but Vitalik was another one who, I remember meeting him. And I remember meeting him in 2005 because I went up to shake his hand and he looked at me and walked away. Um, he, over the years, he came to live again at the Safe Haven House of Bogdan and Anya. He went there because he didn't have any place to go, and uh, he was there. And one time, I was there, and he was, I was noticing everybody, we had a small group meeting, and everybody was praying but him. So afterwards, I went up with him out to his room, and I sat down with him and I said, Vitalik, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in the Bible? And he looked at me and said, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in the Bible. Like, All right. And then he broke down crying. And I was like, what did I do? And when he composed himself, he said, I want to believe, but I don't know how. And we just talked about it and said, well, just pray. And even if you look up and say, I don't even know if you're there, but be real in my life. And Soon after that, he wiped the tears and he goes, okay, let's go watch football. <laughs> like, All right. We walk into the house and Anya was looking. She goes, what did you do to him? I'm like, I don't know. But over the, the next year, something broke in him. And he became a, a Christian. And uh, this is Lena. Lena was also at the orphanage. Met the same year, but she was much more open. And she actually prayed and asked Christ into her life. And she came and lived at the house off also. And this is Vitalik, Lena, their daughter, Zoya, and these are their foster kids. So again, you know, they, they took their lives, these shattered, broken lives, and are making something because they want to give back. They want to give to other kids in their lives. So, uh, that's me, and that's Luba. And Luba was at the, the orphanage, and she came from a very difficult family life. Her mom is... Uh, mentally in, unstable, lost all the kids to the orphanage, just uh, very difficult. Uh, but Luba's had this personality, you, you're just drawn to, and she's very strong. And she's very competitive. She will not lose at any game, or, you know, or she'll play you until she wins. Uh, but again, she came and lived at Safe Haven afterwards, and now, um, that's her now at the camp. She works for the ministry that runs the camps. She sets up all the camps for the kids. So again, it's, it's her transformed life. And, um, these are three of the kids who, guys who live at the house now, this was many years ago, um, Andre, Jenya, and Gena. And Gena, um, we met probably when he was nine years old, and he is one of six kids, same mom, three different fathers. The mom died in Italy many years ago, and he doesn't even know what happened. Um, but Gena came to the Safe Haven house, and right away, God just, like, he, he's one of these relational people. He just bonds with you, and when he does, it's like this lifelong commitment. And he now um, is there, and that's Bogdan Ananya's smallest son, who loves Gena. You know, he just knows his heart, he can sense his heart. Again, as a university student now, um, he started a photography business because he loves photography, and he's really involved. He helped set up their, at the Geva Youth Church, and he's involved in that. And he now comes back to the camp, so he's one of the leaders at the camps with us, too. 
And this is Dima. And Dima, um, we met him at the juvenile prison. He, uh, he had grown up in an orphanage, and he doesn't know his parents. He told me one time he's never even seen a photo. He would just love to know what his parents even looked like. And to me, I, I think of that sometimes. You know, it's like not even knowing anything, but he doesn't. And you know, so he, it's always been an issue with him. But then when he was at the orphanage, he said his goal was to become the best criminal ever. <laughs> and he became a criminal, but he wasn't very good at it because he got caught. Uh, so he ended up in the juvenile prison, started coming to the group that Lydia and Sergey and sometimes I lead over there. And something clicked where he felt like he felt that love of God, that help of the Holy Spirit. He prayed and he became a Christian and he had no place to go. So we asked, said, if you want, you can come and live at the rehab center that we started because we also have kids from the prison. And he lived there for three years. When he got there, he wanted to finish his education, and which he was allowed to do. But the director of the school kept saying, okay, you have to do this, you have to do that. And every time he did it, she'd say, you have to do this. And then finally, she became honest and said, I'm just telling you, he's not going to come to this school. I'm going to keep moving the bar. So she didn't want him because he, there's a thought over in Ukraine, especially with older people, that if you're in an orphanage or especially a juvenile prison, you have bad blood. Genetically, there's nothing you can do to change. Even Christians I've heard tell, like Bogdan Ainu, they said when they start having kids, they said, why do you let these kids in your home? You know they're bad. They're going to influence your kids. So they even have this feeling they're beyond redemption. But we were able to get Dima into another school that took him, he took up cooking and everything like that. And now he's uh, married, he's got a daughter, and he's working as a mechanic. And so he said, it's like, I never had a family, but God's given me something that I don't have. And he goes, now my daughter's going to know who her parents are, what they look like. And this I just wanted, this is kind of more a little personal. This was almost 20 years ago. And, the, <laughs> and that's little Dima, we used to call him. Um, Dima came to, we used to do concerts, there was in there, and uh, as outreach. And I was sitting out in front of a concert hall, and I'm waiting for a friend of mine to come. And all of a sudden, this little <laughs> waif of a kid comes walking over, and he asked me in Russian what time it was. I didn't know any Russian at that time. And he was like, oh, you know, it's like, American. You know, I'm like, yes, American. And then uh, he tried to give me some sunflower seeds, you know, and over there, you, you, know, you peel them and eat them. And I couldn't, I didn't know. And he thought that was the funniest thing, you know. But my friend Lilia came. I said, invite him back after the concert. So afterwards, he came back to stage, and we got talking, and got his address, and I said, well, I'm going to pray for you. Why don't you pray for me? He said, I don't know how to pray. I said, pray is just talking to God. Well, over the years, we stayed in touch, and he at one point asked me if I would help him to go to college, because he, he actually ended up getting into the, basically the Harvard of Ukraine. And I didn't know, because I didn't know him all that well, and I said, yes, I'll help you, but I sent money through a friend, you know, to make sure it was going the right way. And over the years, we just got really close. And then at one point, he said, um, "He said, can I ask you something serious?" I'm like, "Sure." He goes, "Can I call you Papa?" <laughs> and I said, "I said yes, of course you can." And he goes, "Good. Now God's given me something I never had, and you something you don't have." So he grew up. His his mom left when he was an infant, came back when he was ten, then took off again. And then after that, within a year, his grandmother who raised him died, his grandfather died, his great-grandmother died, and he went into the orphanage. You know, I knew him for about nine years before one time. Like, he, he never really wanted too much to do with God. But then one camp he came to help out, and I was kind of hoping at the camp, you know, even as a helper, God would use him. And then uh, through another friend of mine, he prayed. And he asked God to his life, and it's like something clicked. And afterwards, I was like, oh, that's what I was hoping. He's like, you set me up? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yes. <laughs> but um, now he's, he's married, he's got a daughter, and, you know, he's, he's, he works as a journalist. You know? And the thing was, he'd also had a daughter from a previous relationship, and the mother 
didn't want him to have anything to do with her because she didn't like his character and what he was. But after he became a follower of Jesus, she, she, he met, and I said, I want to be a part of my daughter's life. And she said, I see something different in you. We'll give it a shot. And he still is. And now his older daughter's 13. So. And, you know, these, these next pictures of kids who, you know, we don't know where they stand. This is at another of the orphanages. That's my friend Misha. And we're, we were supposed to do the camp the 24th through the 30th. Well, they moved it back. So now it's going to be April something through April something. But Brian, who's the other guy going with me here, we can't change his ticket, and he couldn't get time away from work for that. So he's still coming over, and we're like, what are we going to do? Well, Misha is doing a camp for these kids. So Brian's going to be able to help out there. You know, but what we're hoping is that with these kids, you know, maybe one of them will be the next slides, the next pictures of that hope, you know, that knowing that helper. And, you know, or maybe it's going to be some of these guys from the juvenile prison. Uh, the kid in the back with the, the thing on his cheek, um, he's doing 10 years. But recently his heart's been really softening up. And he said when he gets done, he wants to be able to maybe come live at the rehab house. You know, his name's Sasha. So we don't know. Maybe he's going to be the next demon. Or maybe it's one of these kids. This is, these are some of the kids from the, the camp that we'll be doing. So we'll be doing a couple of camps. Leah is the little one down there, and then Ella, and then uh, Valera. You know, we don't know what God's going to do. And I just ask you your prayers you know, for this time we're over there um, because we're going to have a chance to spend the time with the kids you know, and share, and it's all about relationships with them. And you know, if any of you are interested in sponsoring the kids, um, still got some more. You can see me afterwards. I'm looking like for 75 bucks for a kid for, for the camp. If you're interested, just see me afterwards. And uh, hopefully I'll be here next next Sunday, planning on it, because we've got a night flight. So, But I would appreciate if you could even just be praying for the kids, just for them to be open, because a lot of these kids, you know, showing you the success stories, but there's a lot more that don't, you know, and we want to make sure that those kids at least have a chance to. So. Thank you, John. Um, so really what it's about is going and doing what you can do. If you tried to plan all of these things and plan it out perfectly and make it happen, it probably wouldn't be so pretty. Um, and I'm sure there are times where it's not pretty, where it's very difficult, where you look and you go, you know what, God, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would not have done it that way. Why is it like this? And it's that whole idea, again, about it as well with my soul. Um, the verse I chose today to speak of, and I don't have as much time, so I'm not going to get into it too deeply, but um, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Really, he was, Paul was talking about the fact that these people wanted to go back and have something they had to do to add to what Jesus did for them. And Paul said, you can't. Either you accept that Jesus did it all, that he was in charge, or you're not accepting what he's really about. You can't add to that. And so, so often, I think that we can start to add things to our lives that we think, well, we have to, because we're Christians, we have to do this. I've had people look at me and say, well, so as a Christian, you can do whatever you want? And the answer is yes. But the question is, what do you want to do? Because it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Not for us to be stuck again having to do something, but to be free from what? And this is the question. I think it's to be free from everything. To be free in Christ to say, God, do your thing. Let me be a part of it. But do you think? Help me get out of the way in whatever way I can, but do your thing in my life. And that's huge. It's so much different than the ideas that we have. Well, I've got to have this ministry, and I've got to do it just so. And that, I mean, you work your hardest to do your best, right? But there are times where you just have to go, but I can't make the camp happen. They moved it back. Guess what? We're going to go anyway. And all of a sudden, someone else says, oh, we've got a camp. 
at that camp. Do you think God knew that camp was going to happen? Do you think God knew who was going to be at that camp? We went to um, Mercy Me this um, this Friday. It's a Friday, Thursday, Friday, and um, Mercy Me. I'm not a big Christian singer kind of guy, and blah blah blah. And I went. And I thought that would be all right. Um, and as I went, and he, the guy started to talk from it. Um, the leader of the band started to talk from his life. He really just started to talk about how the freedom from having to do or be is something that is changing his life even now because he grew up in a church that was about, well, you've got to do this and you've got to do that and on and on. And we, we all have those lists in our head, don't we? We're honest. And to get to the place where he finds his freedom, um, he just, you know, it, it's such a life-changing experience for him. And at one point, he has a son that has um, diabetes and it's pretty severe and he's going to share that story with us, and it may seem a little bit off of what we were talking about, but, but for me, what I saw in that is that there is freedom even in this aspect of it as well with my soul. We can worry about things, but what are we doing? Are we getting in the way of freedom? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom from what? From everything. To be able to go to God and say, God, even though it doesn't look good, I know you've got my back. It is well with my soul. I'm going to let him do these last 10 minutes, and he's going to sing, I'm sure, at the end, and then we're out of here, okay? But just listen, let it soak in, think about all the things that we've kind of touched on today, and um, let God touch your heart freely in these uh, next couple minutes. It's, it's interesting because when you stand up here, a lot of times people think you're supposed to have it all together. You have answers. And we walk around hovering too much love for ground.
because I was having a bad day. I blame the kids. But sometimes it's the last thing you want to hear because deep down, a part of me wrestles the fact that I know God can heal him, but for whatever reason, he's not. But you know what? That's okay. Because the way we see it in our house, Sam's just going to change the world as a diabetic. It's okay. And there are times when it doesn't feel okay, and I just want to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want to have the courage to stand in front of the fiery furnace and say, I know that God can deliver us, but even if He does not, I'm still not going to surrender. I'm still not going to bow because He's worth it. Because deep down, even though there are times I forget who I am, luckily He never forgets me. And there are times when I want to give up. But the bottom line is the only way I can get up every morning and go through this is because of what Christ has already done. No circumstance will change who I am in Christ. It'll try. Sometimes it feels like it's going to win. Regardless of what we go through, He's bigger. We have to believe that with all of our hearts. Otherwise, what do we do? So I don't know what you're going through. I know that we all go through something. If you haven't yet, God bless you, it's coming. <laughs> it's interesting, most of the people that I see that are standing in front of the fire, I have an aunt that has cancer. She gets it more than I do. Almost gone. She looked at me and said, Do you think this is going to win? No. I won a long time ago. I'm like, How does she get it standing there and I'm just having a bad day and I'm struggling? So, this song simply goes out to any of you fine people that have ever had a bad day. This is even him.
I know the sound quality wasn't great, it wasn't, but the words, the message. I know you can do all this, I know you can change, but even if you don't, my heart will trust in you alone. There's freedom in that. It goes so far beyond our worry and our controlling and all the things as human beings that we do over and over. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Do you know that freedom? Thank God you do. If you don't, fall into his arms. As a believer or not, if you, if, you, if you haven't accepted Christ yet, you can't know the freedom. If you are a believer and you just haven't fallen into his arms, fall back. Trust his arms. Let him hug you. I'll tell you what, it's something that you'd never want to go back the other way. So when someone says, you can do whatever you want to do as a believer, yep. What do you want to do? Let's pray as we close. Father, thank you for your love, for your grace. And Father, as we go forward, help us to know that freedom that you give. Not what do we have to do. No, what can we do? What can we be a part of that you have for us? We can get pulled back in. We can do things that will suck up all of our time. But what are we missing? We're missing you. We're missing life. So, Father, even as we go, and as John goes and prepares for this ministry, the first things wouldn't work out. But, Father, in your freedom, we know that you have something for the second plan. We call it plan B. You call it plan A. Thank you for that. Help us as we go to live in your plan A. And we'll thank you as we go in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great week.